Hey there, forget about the traditional wine tasting approaches for a minute. Today we are diving into the power of comparative tasting. If you're ready to take your wine tasting skills to the next level and broaden your sensory repertoire, you've come to the right place. In this video, we'll explore a tasting method that will completely change the way you experience wine and help you uncover all its amazing facets. Hey, I'm Isabel Lechab a wine sensory scientist and tasting coach. My mission is to demystify the rituals of wine tasting. So let's get started. You know, there is no absolute right or wrong when it comes to describing wine. Our brains naturally compare things to decide what's worth our attention. We compare grades in schools, our performance in sports, or even our own skills and abilities with others. So why not apply that same natural tendency to wine tasting? Instead of assessing each glass individually with the usual method of see, swirl, smell, sip and savor, why not compare the wines with each other? It just makes sense, right? That's why I'm sharing today a technique to help you navigate the challenges of wine description more easily. It's called the comparative testing method, and it's a sensory approach that allows you to explore and compare different wines side by side, focusing on one aspect at a time. By contrasting the aromas, the flavors and mouthfeel of each wine, it becomes much easier to describe the differences you perceive. Take a look at this figure to see the differences in the process. Instead of evaluating one sample at a time, based on smell, taste, flavor, or mouthfeel, we evaluate the two wines simultaneously. We start by assessing the aromas, then we taste and compare the components. So let's put this into practice. By the way, you can find my tasting sheet in the video notes and downloaded it to follow along. So today I've chosen two Chardonnay wines for our tasting. They are from the same producer, but come from different vineyards. I'm just curious to discover the unique flavor nuances between them. So first, let's smell wine number one. Try to describe its aroma using the wine aroma wheel, but don't worry about being too precise. I added a link to buy this simple tool uh, in the show notes if you don't have one. So let's start by smelling wine number one. So as usual, I just uh, pour a little a bit of wine in my uh, ISO glass and I cover it with um, aluminum foil to um, trap the, fl the flavors, the, the aromas in the headspace of the wine. So let's start with wine number one. I don't know which wine, you know, I didn't read any label, so let's do it. So I like to smell before swirling and after swirling uh, the wine. So before swirling, A lot of um, fruity notes rem reminiscent of uh, citrus, and I'm just uh, checking my wine aroma wheel here. So on the fruity notes, uh, citrus, we have grapefruit or lemon. Uh, let's see what I... It's more uh, lemon, lemon juice, and uh, I also perceive uh, some uh, yeasty notes, more like um, light toasted bread. Let's uh, swirl the wine to see what I perceive. The toasted bread is a bit more um, present. It's even dominant for me. So let's take my notes. So wine number one, more lemony, juicy. and um, light toasted bread. And after swirling, the toasted bread is um, dominant. So now, so now let's uh, compare with wine number two. But first, let me um, 
remind you that this exercise is designed to train your brain to differentiate between the aromatic profiles of the two wines. So take a moment to, um, before going to wine number two, cleanse your, note, cleanse your nose by smelling some water. Every time I say, you know, cleanse your nose, it's not about, you know, putting water in your nose. It's really uh, to smell something neutral that uh, will uh, flush any uh, leftover um, volatile molecules in your, uh, in your nasal cavity. You can also smell your arm or your sleeves if there are no, no fragrance on them. So let's um, take wine number two, again, covered with aluminum foil and compare its aroma to the first wine. So I don't have that juicy lemony um, component. It's almost like a tree fruit. And maybe some aniseed. Let me check again. And I swirl the, the glass because it's uh, a bit more muted. So as I smell something more like peachy. And if it's lemony, it's more like cooked. And there is something spicy that I describe as aniseed. That's maybe a flower, I don't know. It's very, uh, it's less intense than the first, uh, the, the first wine. So that's also something you can uh, do um, to train your nose by compare, comparing the two wines, compare the intensity as well as the quality of what you perceive. All right. So keep in mind that, you know, I'm tasting the wine at room temperature, which is the norm in the wine industry um, for detecting flavors, uh, flavor nuances, especially off notes, uh, because when the wines are chilled, the flavors can be very muted. So the ideal temperature, um, you know, to consume the wine is around 55 Fahrenheit or 10 degrees Celsius. But when you want to um, compare the wines and, and learn and practice wine aroma description, it's easier to start uh, at, with wine at room temperature. Again, it's for the practice. So now let's move on to the tasting part. So if, um, you know, it's always a good practice to rinse your mouth before tasting any wine. So um, if you have some water, just uh, take a sip, swish in your mouth. And um, take wine number one. So take a sip and um, Again, think of any associations you have with maybe other beverages or other flavors you have encountered before. And pay particularly attention to the retronasal aromas, the sense that you uh, perceive that arise in your mouth as you sip. So remember the um, retronasal is perceived here. And you can also uh, think about any taste or any feeling that you have uh, in your mouth. So let me taste wine number one. And I like to expectorate. So this wine is definitely acidic, a bit caramel and toasted, uh, to toasted oak and a bit yeasty, but different acidic, differently acidic. So when you perceive acid, um, you know, it makes your, your mouth um, water. Uh, it's very watery and uh, it's almost pickly on your tongue. Interesting. So acidic, but caramel uh, notes, uh, aromas, toasted oak and a bit yeasty. In terms of the mouthfeel, didn't pay attention. So let's have another sip. not really creamy, but it's not uh, watery either. So I guess um, you people might say it's medium body. Um, 
but it's not harsh, it's, it's smooth. So let's rinse our, our mouth uh, before tasting wine number two. Sometimes I also um, have a break because uh, rinsing with water is not always enough, but time is the best um, palate cleanser, actually. I can feel, you know, the alcohol uh, as an aftertaste. It's kind of, of burning and burning here. Not unpleasant, it's just a warm feeling. That's maybe what my mouth feel is, it's uh, warmth. Okay, and number two, here we go. So I have also an acidic feeling, but not as strong as the previous uh, sample. Again, you know, remember to compare the two, the two samples. Uh, the flavor is a bit muted. There's not a lot going on. Maybe something a bit floral. I had a touch of something green, but I, I was not able to um, really identify it. It's really something fresh, not canned or, or dried and re yeah, reminiscent of something floral. I don't know, might be orange blossom, I, that's a guess. Uh, but again, alcohol warmth as an aftertaste. And in terms of the mouthfeel, it's a bit creamier than the first uh, sample. The first sample was definitely more acidic, you know, mouth watering. Whereas the, se the second sample is there's still a touch of acidity, but uh, less um, mouth watering, a bit uh, heavier in the mouth, or maybe a bit creamier, but no flavors of butter or, or, or cream. It's more the, the filling uh, of the liquid. All right. Um, so what I really uh, like to, to do is compare uh, the producer um, wine tasting notes with my tasting notes. So let's see what um, they are saying. So these two wines are from Oregon, uh, the Arabilis Winery. It's um, a young couple who um, has started their um, wine, um, wine operation a few years back. So the first wine is the 2021 Perlstadt Vineyard uh, Chardonnay. So they describe the wine as having notes of grilled lemon, white nectarine, white, white wild flowers, crushed wet stone, lemony herbs, and a touch of cream. A medium body with mouth-watering acidity and lingering finish. So I had uh, the lemony character um, they talk about uh, toasted uh, lemon, if I remember correctly. And that's maybe what I call the toasted bread. I didn't have the, um, the white flowers or the nectarine. I had that more on the second wine. And um, they also talk about uh, the mouth-watering uh, acidity, which uh, I, I got. And uh, yeah, I had more caramel toasted oak uh, yeast, but not heavily, you know, just a touch of, of these things and uh, the, the warmth of, of the alcohol. So it's all right if we, you know, didn't have the same uh, description, it's always uh, a good to compare and learn and maybe revisit the wine with those tasting notes and uh, try to understand what the producer wanted to express. And the wines evolve, so when the producer um, tasted the wine and creating these tasting notes, you know, might be six months ago, and uh, then I'm tasting today. So and it's also uh, possible that we experience the wine differently. 
So let's see what the second wine tasting notes uh, reveal. It's a 2021 Dampier Vineyard. Uh, they describe it as a wine with freshness and purity, cantaloupe and honeydew flavors, bright acidity and oyster shell sali salinity. Wow. Um, well, I had more peachy, lemon cooked uh, type of flavor, something spicy. Might be the honeydews, you know, sometimes the honeydew have some spice uh, in the flavor. Um, I had also some uh, acidity, they describe it as bright acidity, but not as mouth watering as the first wine. And uh, this oyster shell sal salinity, which I think um, they, like it previously when they were talking about whetstone and here oyster shell, um, they tried to evoke minerality uh, in their description. Um, to me, minerality, I associate minerality with the um, flint flavor that are typical of Chablis because that's how I learned what, you know, what minerality uh, really uh, is uh, for me. So I don't perceive this whetstone or oyster shell type of aromas, but that's definitely something to explore further. And uh, yeah, so this concludes my uh, tasting. Let's move on. Remember, there is no absolute right or wrong when it comes to wine tasting. Your sensory experiences are unique to you based on your genetics and cultural background. It's all about personal associations and comparisons. As you explore different wines, try to consciously relate them to familiar smells, tastes or feeling. This process will gradually expand your sensory repertoire. Maybe one wine reminds you of the aroma of freshly baked strawberry tarts, while another evokes the fragrance of a plant in your garden, or even the scent of your shampoo. These personal associations become the building blocks of your sensory language, enabling you to describe wines with more depth and precision. Now you might wonder, Isabel, is it acceptable to describe a wine smelling like my shampoo? Well, why not? Your sensory language is deeply personal and it's perfectly fine to draw connections between wine aromas and everyday scents. In fact, it can be an excellent starting point for further exploration when you begin your tasting journey. After wine tasting, take a moment to check the fragrance of your shampoo in the bathroom and you might discover that what you smelled in the wine was reminiscent of apples, which, which is, you know, the fragrance of your shampoo. So this process of associating and verifying is how we expand our sensory repertoire, how we memorize. So we hone our ability to identify and articulate different aromas and flavors. And to enhance your tasting experience, consider using tools like the wine aroma wheel. This handy tool categorizes aromas from general descriptors like fruity, floral, or spicy to more specific terms like citrus, lemon, berries, or vanilla. The wine aroma wheel can serve as a helpful reference point, guiding you in pinpointing and articulating the nuances of the aromas you encounter during your, during your tastings. I added a link in the notes below this video if you wish to get one. Remember, when it comes to your wine tasting journey, it's not about striving for correctness or precision right from the start. Give yourself permission to use your own language and associations to describe what you smell and taste. By actively listening to your nose with increased awareness, your descriptive abilities will naturally refine and evolve over time. The key is to continue practicing and exploring to build your sensory language. The comparative tasting methods I share today offers you a fresh approach to enhancing your wine tasting skills. By comparing and contrasting different wines side by side and focusing on each sensory aspect, such as smell, taste, and mouthfeel, you develop a rich sensory repertoire that allows you to identify and appreciate the unique characteristics of each wine. And embrace your personal associations and comparisons. And don't hesitate to use your own language when describing the aromas and flavors. As you delve deeper into the world of wine, your sensory language will grow and deepen, enriching your overall tasting experience and expanding your wine knowledge overall. 
Remember, there is no right or wrong, just the joy of discovering and the pleasure of expanding your wine knowledge through tasting. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and leave your comments below and subscribe to the Innovinum Academy channel to stay updated with your upcoming tasting tutorials. Cheers.